I've used Shape6R and here's what I think. Is it a valuable tool for XR designers or does it fall short? Let's talk about what sets it apart, what leaves room for improvement and if it's a tool worth investing your time in or not. My name is Anna and I'm a UX designer at Immersive Insiders with more than six years of experience in UX design. So join me as I document my journey of diving into XR design. Shape6R is a 3D design and prototyping tool for spatial experiences like VR, AR and MR. And it allows you to brainstorm and ideate your ideas in real time together with your teammates. Quick disclaimer here, our team at Immersive Insiders has already collaborated with Shape6R. However, this is not a sponsored video. It's about my genuine experience with their tool as a professional UX designer, and I'm here to share my thoughts, my honest opinion, plain and simple. The main features I am going to show you in a sec are the ones that I found especially helpful during a recent project. I've created a prototype for the Shift Medical Congress in Germany, quick shout out to them, where we wanted to showcase an emergency care unit scenario. Now let's get into the features. You can easily access your tools with a button press and use a variety of UI elements or 3D shapes, real life objects, people in various positions, or simply import your own assets. Quick tip here, um, at the beginning of every project, I like to bring in a person to make sure that all the other assets and elements after that have the correct proportions and scale. You can also change the color and material of your assets and add texts to give your designs more context. The Gizmo tool allows you to move, scale and rotate the objects in your space. Sometimes precision is key which is why you can also snap objects to other elements and align them more accurately. Each object has points that you can grab and snap them to any other object in the scene. The stage system serves as your canvas for storyboarding and showcasing interactions or user flows. As a heavy Figma user, navigating the stages in Shape6R actually feels quite similar to creating different frames in Figma before creating a prototype. So you have like different scenes, basically. The pass-through mode keeps you connected to the real world while designing, making it ideal for creating immersive AR and MR experiences. As of today, I've only tried out Shape6R on the Quest 2, but I'm really excited to try it out on the Quest 3 as soon as it arrives, and I think the pass-through mode is going to be so much more immersive on that device. These are not all the features that Shapes has to offer. There's still much more than that. There are Interactions, for example, hollow notes and a Figma integration, which I really liked. So um, definitely make sure to check them out because all these three features, so the hollow notes, the interactions and the Figma integration, they are in beta right now and available to all users for free. But I'm sure this is going to change at some point. Also, as you probably know, there's more to becoming an XR designer than just knowing how to work with one tool. In the info box, you can find Dinesh's video about important skills and tools in XR design. But let's get back to the video. Now that we've covered the essential features of Shapes XR, let's dive into what I found really appealing about this tool. First off, there is no steep learning curve with Shapes XR. Getting started was a breeze and many aspects of the tool felt quite intuitive. Most questions I had were actually answered either by their YouTube tutorials or their documentation online. So with a few hours of experimentation, I actually found myself up to speed and ready to create. But what truly drew me to Shapes XR are these key points. Working with objects on a screen always involves some guesswork as to how everything is going to feel like in the end when you're inside the experience. But working with 3D in 3D <laughs> seriously breaks down so many barriers. The ability to collaborate in real time, all within one tool, is a major advantage. You can communicate your ideas to all stakeholders much more easily and iterate a lot faster. Cross-functional teams and different departments always have like slightly different ways of working. They have different perspectives, different tools, most importantly. And in my opinion, Shape6R brings that together really well. Every tool you frequently need is mapped within quick reach on your controller. They don't make you think and click through thousands of options to go to the setting or tool you need. You can just focus on designing and I love that. Okay, let's talk about what I missed in Shape6R. 
When collaborating with multiple team members, having a robust version control and a comprehensive version history is crucial. The ability to revert back to earlier versions can be a real lifesaver in complex projects. Imagine your teammate opens up your project while you are on vacation. They delete something by mistake and you come back afterwards wondering what happened and you cannot go back to the way it was before, to the earlier version. I would love to have a solution for that. The stage thumbnails had different colors, which was quite helpful already. However, being able to assign custom names to each thumbnail would reduce the mental load a lot. What would make it even better is previewing the changes you've made from one stage to another. To show you what I mean by this, I actually created a quick prototype. So here on my left hand, you can see the original stage system that Shape6R is using at the moment. We have the different colors and the numbers. And um, now in my prototype here, you can see that I assigned custom names to each stage and the thumbnails are actually um, previewing what has changed from one stage to the other. So if I now switch to summer to stage two, you can see that the leaves of the tree are actually changing in autumn as well. And in winter, the tree suddenly has no leaves anymore, just some snow on the branches. By doing this, in my opinion, I am reducing the mental load a lot. It helps me to design a lot faster. I don't have to think that much, especially in complex projects where I maybe have all 50 stages in use and I can just focus much more on designing. Now, in very complex projects where you have like a lot of elements in the scene, maybe it makes sense to just display the things that have changed instead of all the elements that you can see in one scene. Having the option to create more than 25 or 50 stages would be amazing. You can actually reach that limit quite fast. You can create 25 stages with the free plan and 50 stages with the basic and enterprise plan. Shapes offers a lot of functions, and sometimes multiple functions are mapped onto the same button on the controller. Especially at the beginning, when I had to learn the meaning of all these icons, it would have been so helpful to see tooltips when I hover over the button with my other hand. In terms of accessibility, in my opinion, there's still some room for improvement in the color choices and the color contrasts within Shapes XR. Currently, the color contrasts are not as high as they should be, and some UI elements could be more visual appealing, but maybe that's the UI designer in me speaking. <laughs> all in all, Shape 6R is pretty powerful and it's been a fantastic tool to work with. Their sample scenes are very interesting and show what could be done in Shape 6R, so definitely go and check them out. What I'd love to see though is maybe a speed run or some more in-depth tutorials through the sample scenes to help creators fully unlock their potential. I've actually experienced that I get a lot more tired while working in VR compared to just working on a laptop. My senses are being involved in a completely different way and for the next project I will definitely remember to take some more breaks and take it easy. But all in all, give it a shot and I'm sure you will find Shape 6R as exciting as I did. I mentioned earlier that there's more to becoming an XR designer rather than just being familiar with Shape 6R. So check out this video where we show you what skills and tools there are and how you can make your transition to XR design easier than ever. If you liked the video and want more content for XR designers, let us know in the comments below. That's it for today and I'll catch you in the next one.